Good afternoon, thank you for joining us. I'm Robert Baylor, Director of Communications at NUCA. Welcome to our latest webinar Wednesday featuring NUCA national partner B2W Software. First, before we begin, some webinar housekeeping for attendees. Today's webinar will be recorded. It will be available on NUCA's YouTube channel and via our webinar webpage, both of which can be accessed via NUCA.com. All participants are muted upon entry. Phone participants can use star six to mute and unmute themselves. Questions will be asked at the end of the presentation. To ask a question, you can submit a written question at any time using the chat feature, and I'll read them at the conclusion of our discussion. Now let's get started. Reporting on what crews achieve in the field can do a lot more than simply satisfying the accounting department. In this webinar, you'll find out how daily insights into performance versus planning can help your utility construction company. You'll find out how to adjust operations more effectively and immediately and use this information to base your next estimate on actual achievable production rates. We're joined today by tech expert Tom Willey. Tom has been with B2W Software for over 17 years and in the technology space for over 25 years. In his 17 years with the company, he has moved from trainer to implementation team lead to solutions engineer and now manages the solutions engineering team. Thank you all for joining us today on this NUCA Webinar Wednesday. Tom, I turn the webinar over to you. Thank you very much, Bob. Just a quick check, I hope you can hear me okay. I got muted a couple times there, so hopefully I, I won't uh, get muted again. Uh, like, but thank you everyone. Like uh, great, excellent, thanks Bob. So just as Bob described there, my name is Tom Willey and I'm a senior solutions engineer for B2W Software. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for data-driven profitability for utility construction. Let's go ahead and jump right into the uh, agenda here for today. So we'll start just a, a couple of quick slides about our company, B2W Software, what solutions we provide, and that will help set the stage for some of the products that you'll see later. Then we'll talk a, a little bit more about the title of this session. What does that mean, data-driven approach? We'll kind of break that down into some pieces. And spoiler alert, some of those pieces are the next few bullets. So we'll spend some time looking at specific ways to get the data that you need or want and then how we can leverage that data for both real-time data analysis, but also how we can take the value of that data and look at it over a longer period. And then as Bob described, we'll leave some time at the end for any Q&A. So just a, a little bit about us. B2W Software has been in the heavy civil construction technology space since 1993. We were founded by a, a heavy civil guy so our, our former owner, Paul McKeon, started the company. He was a uh, paver estimator and knew there had to be a better way. And in the early 90s, he wanted to marry technology with the construction industry that he really loved. And so from there, we started and created estimating tools and then quickly branched into the operations realm so that our technology could kind of bring more focus to different parts of the construction process. We are currently headquartered in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. That is a picture of our actual building right on the Piscataqua River. And we were acquired by Trimble uh, back in September of 2022. Uh, they made a strategic acquisition of our company because the product, some of which we'll be looking at today, really dovetailed very well into their strategic vision of a connected construction space. So a little bit about those products that, that they got with their acquisition and what we provide. On the right-hand side is what we call our product wheel. So you'll see at the top there, B2W Estimate. It's our bidding and estimating package. And then the next three going clockwise, B2W Schedule, Track, and Maintain are our operational tools. And so that's a resource logistics and dispatching tool in Schedule, a uh, field tracking and analysis product in B2W Track, and then a heavy equipment maintenance and management module for break, fix, and work orders and maintain. And then B2W Inform, is our enterprise data collection and analysis tool. And those together form the breadth of our product offering. And you'll see their unified estimating and operations. We really believe that those products together should have very well-connected workflows that share data in real time. So all those products are able to kind of share information with each other in some form or fashion. And in the case of those three operational tools, schedule, track, and maintain, they're actually a single SQL database that lives under the covers. And so those products working together really deliver the value proposition that's on the left. Being able to bid jobs faster with more accuracy, 
making sure you know where your real assets and people are, what's coming up, what's next, being able to track your daily performance, how you're performing against the estimate, making sure your equipment fleet is maintained, and then being able to capture any and all data around those workflows. And for our presentation today, we'll really be spending just a minute or two in estimate and most of our time in track. So moving on to the, the second bullet there in the agenda, what do we mean when we say the data-driven approach? That's a, a great term. But what that really means is being able to capture information, most of the information that, that is there that already exists, and using it to see it in real time in a way that makes sense, and then use that data to take corrective action. And if you look at how to do that, right, the first piece would really be building on the basics. If we talk about what data is, it's any piece of information. And most companies are gathering that now. Almost every single company has to gather at least one piece, which is labor. And so in order to get people paid, they have to write down hours and bring that someplace for payroll. That's the single most important piece of data that people really care about. So if you can build on that, most clients need to go above labor and look at things like equipment and materials and their production quantities. How much work are they achieving? And really, there's no end to the amount of data that you could capture. And we talk to clients all the time that say, well, we have five pieces of data today. We want to capture 100 pieces. We want every depth of cut class and the temperature and the slant of the truck that was parked on the sidewalk. Like, that's great. But that second bullet there often comes in, which is the reality of understanding what your field is really capable of. And what we find is there's often a very big disconnect between the data that companies wish they could capture and really their field staff's uh, either ability or willingness to do that. And there's a very real reason for that, right? Like a lot of um, our clients have uh, their user base, their, their field staff, are some of the more experienced people, which means they've been around longer and they're less likely to be comfortable with computers. Or just as practically, those field staff are just much more focused on getting the real work done, right? They want to put pipe in the ground and dig holes and put down asphalt. They don't want to spend hours entering in data onto a computer. But if you can kind of find that balance and get them to capture the right amount of data in a, a simple and easy format, then being able to consolidate that data will yield huge results, right? It means that if you can get them to enter the data. There are systems and tools in place, which we'll show you that can very quickly turn that data into real understandable information about how you're performing. And then you can use that for really two pieces, the immediate, what's going on right now and what do I need to do right now to optimize that job? But also how do I spot longer term trends? I'm getting really good information every day. What does 10 days look like? What does 30, what does 100 days look like? And using that to really understand how your jobs are performing across many jobs, across the whole company. And then eventually closing that loop. So not only do you want to know how you're performing, but how can you leverage that earlier in the process to make a more realistic assessment of your bids? So kind of moving forward in that, right, getting the data that you need or want, know what your field can and can't do or won't do. And we see this a lot, right? You have a, a management staff that really wants to modernize the company but they face some pretty serious roadblocks from their existing employees that say, we really don't feel like doing that. And they have kind of a disproportionate amount of pull these days because everyone needs field staff and aren't enough of them to get all the work done. So they can kind of call more shots than you would think they would be able to do. And what that really means is you gotta keep it simple, right? So you need to find the right balance between what your company absolutely needs to modernize and understand where it is and pare it down to whatever is simplest for the field to be able to fill out. And when you find that overlap, then you've got a base to work from, capturing more data that the field will tolerate. And a, an important piece of that is shaping the experience. Oftentimes you can, you can make things easier for the field if the interface that they're using is straightforward and it, it kind of dovetails from what they have. You can make things look easier for them. Um, if you can make fewer fields or make it so they're drop downs instead of them having to type. All these things make it a little bit easier for the field to get their job done. 
And that last bullet is super important too. You know, whatever these tools are that you bring in, not only should they be delivering value for the management, but they should also be bringing something to the field too. So these tools should hopefully make their life easier, which will improve adoption and make sure that everyone's kind of benefiting from that transition. So that's the first thing we're going to look at here. We're going to move to a demonstration. And what I'm going to show you is something called a field log. Now, this is the homepage of our operational suite of products. Again, we're going to be focusing on track. Track is really predicated on setting up jobs and then using something called a field log to capture your data against that job. So this is really, I'm going to bring over here, this mobile app that we have here is the data collection experience. Each one of these lines that you see is what we call a field log. I'm going to open up one of these field logs, and I just want you to see, first and foremost, that kind of like we talked about, right, there's a ton of data that we could capture. The jobs we worked on, pictures from the field, estimate items, so billable quantities, cost code, production accounts, employees, equipment, materials, trucking, subs, and miscellaneous, right? A huge treasure trove of data. And most clients, if they could wave a magic wand, they would want all of that. But what you're looking at is what the field has to enter. So a, a truly data-driven approach is meaningless unless those field staff are willing and able to enter the data. And so when we talk about finding that balance between what they will do and what you need and shaping the experience, we're really talking about this. And so we've designed a system that allows you to kind of pare that down. So our field logs are designed to help meet that uh, that kind of challenging need where you can actually take these sections and turn them on or off. Within each section, you can turn fields on or off. You can also rename sections and rename fields and even add your own custom fields. So it really provides a, a huge amount of latitude for companies to find what data they need and want, get rid of the stuff that will make it easier for the field to fill out, and then change that experience for them. So you'll see down here we have something called business units. That, uh, it does a number of things, but one of those is you can have a different layout here. So this is the all singing, all dancing, all the data I wish I had. I'm going to move now to what we call the, the short field log here. And what I want you to see is when I do that, I get a much simpler field log. A whole bunch of sections just go away. Um, I have fewer fields in here. It ends at notes. There's nothing beyond that. And so I can make it much, much more palatable for a field person to just go in and, and enter what they need. Similarly, right, a lot of times companies say, well, we don't call it production counts. We call it cost codes. Or we don't say this. We Our guys know it as a different way. Then we can modify our field log to make it look that way. So you have your company layout here. If I switch to that, right? You might call it company projects. You might say, look, it's your company codes. Like you can change the labels so that whatever product you're now putting in front of them instead of paper or Excel just looks a lot more like what they do today. And that can oftentimes ease the transition. I'm going to go back to a, a bigger picture here. <clears throat> when you find that right balance, then they got to fill it out. And here too, right, it's, it's best to make it as simple as possible. So I'm going to go to a screen here called the grid view. And for most of our clients, the big three pieces of data that they need beyond labor, well, including labor, so labor is the first one. The second one is production quantities, which I can put in up at the top. And then the hours for employees, but also for equipment. That's a huge cost. So here I'm working on excavation and pipe. I've already put in my quantities for the day. so. Just to kind of go through that again, I put in 50 linear feet of pipe and 300 cubic yards of work for excavation. And then underneath, I've got these places for me to enter in the hours. And so I could simply tap the resources that I need to put in. Okay, there's nine hours for employees and for equipment, and I apply that to those resources. Or I could even just enter in, well, it was six hours for excavation and four hours for pipe. And as I'm entering this information, I'm filling that in for the employees as well as the equipment. And I'm going to be able to take this and move it directly into payroll. 
And so we have a number of tools that, again, hopefully make life easier for them. I, I almost never have uh, come across a company where I just enter the hours and that's what they get paid, no questions asked. There's usually a level of um, oversight that goes beyond that. And so we can build in some tools to make it easier for the crew. So if it was supposed to be 10 hours and I only entered in eight, if I try to submit that, the system is going to complain and say, hey, you've got someone who's got not the right number of hours. So we're doing a little bit of error checking for that field staff, making it a little bit easier for them. I also can start to get real-time performance feedback. So a lot of times crews really need and want to know how they're doing. Uh, I can go to this summary screen and I can see prorated for the work that I've done, what did the estimate or the budget say that I should have consumed and what have I entered on the field log and what's the delta? Okay, now I have some actionable data and that's really the tip of the iceberg. But beyond just that data entry here, right, when we talk about making it easier for the field, we have a lot of built-in communication tools that help uh, streamline that flow. So generally that field person, right, they, they usually want to be able to help the company and add in that data. But for the most part, they're most concerned about making sure their people get paid and that they get paid. And a lot of times there's confusion and lag between me entering that data and it getting to payroll or getting to the right person. So we have alerts and notifications that you can configure that would allow a track user to really understand where their field log is in the process. And so these are customizable alerts so that when a field log reaches a certain stage, the appropriate people can be notified. So you see field logs submitted, rejected, created or approved or exported. So I can create this field log, right? And once it passes muster here, I then say, I want to submit that. Now, as soon as I do that, if I wanted to, I could have a customizable alert so that the person who's responsible to review that field log is notified the minute that it happens. And now you reduce that operational lag where I submit this field log at four o'clock and then my boss doesn't know to review it and he just he's doing other stuff. So he just happens to check into the office side on the browser at five o'clock and sees a mistake. And then he rejects that field log and I don't see it until the next morning. Well, now they can receive a text or an email that says that foreman has submitted their field log for your review and I could now go in and review it on this side. I could look at that data, and if I find some type of fault with it, I could reject it or edit it or approve it. But again, those alerts and notifications make it easier for me because if I reject that field log, the foreman can then receive a, a notification. Hey, your field log got rejected. And now everyone has a lot more faith and there's a lot more certainty around the data, and that's happening in a much shorter period of time which means this person filling out their log, they know that they're going to get all of their people paid and paid correctly when payday comes that week. So that's a little bit about getting the data that you need or want, shaping that experience, keeping it simple. Next, we'll look at, okay, so what we've given the field something, we've made it easier for them. They, they get a little something out of it too and better communication, easier to use. But really what this is all about is using that data-driven approach to give you actionable information for analysis. So we've already kind of stolen a little bit from myself here. How did my crew do for the day? You've seen that they saved the field log and they can immediately get that. But once again, that's really the tip of the iceberg. What the system is really doing is taking all of those todays and compiling them in real time. So especially if I have a job that maybe I have multiple crews working on, or that job is taking weeks or months as it should, um, how is that job doing overall? How do I easily see across those five or 10 crews? Or for a pipeline job, could be 20 crews and 50 people each. How do I get a sense of how all that expense is delivering? And how can I see across more than one job? More and more, right, people are being asked to do more with less so whether you're a project manager or superintendent, you're really looking after multiple jobs, and I need to be able to see how they're all doing. 
I might only really need to spend time or attention on jobs that are doing badly. But I don't know which ones those are. So I'm going to go back into the system here. What we'll see is that, again, a data-driven approach could really take that information that the field person is entering and immediately turn it into something that you can see and understand. So I go into a job, and I can see here a nice dashboard that shows me how am I doing, right? How, am I, how many tracking accounts my percent complete are, are being worked on. So I can see many of my tracking accounts are less than 25% complete. Some are 25 to 50, and a few are, are more than 50% complete. So I know that this job is early on. More importantly, I can see tracking accounts by status. So for those cost codes that I'm reporting production against, how many of them are ahead of expectations, about on pace or behind? And this is really where I start to get into to the value of that data-driven approach, where I see problems as they are happening. Most clients, I mean, every, everybody is using some type of data-driven approach, but that data might be your accounting system at the end of the year. And then your ability to act on that data is negligible. If you get that data early and often, it lets you take a more corrective action approach on these jobs. So I might have only been working on this two-month-long project for a couple of days, and I can see we've got some problem accounts. I can just click on the bar and say, well, looks like it's excavation and concrete deck. And I can see for concrete here, I estimated 6,100 cubic yards. I've done 855 for that work that I've performed. I should have used 171 labor hours from the budget, but I've consumed 200. So I'm off by 29 hours or 14.5%. Or I might also need to look at things in different ways. That's a nice quick heads up, you know, the shiny graphs and, and charts. Some people aren't about shapes and colors. They're about cold, hard numbers. And so I can take that data that I've entered on those field logs and look at what that means from a cost perspective. So I'm going to make this a little bigger here. Here I can see all my cost codes. And then what did I estimate for the work that I've performed? And what am I reporting for cost for labor, equipment, materials, trucking, and even projected cost at completion? If I keep going at the same rate, where am I going to end up? And that's the visibility that clients really need to take this daily information that they're gathering for people to get paid and turn it into a way to manage the cost and productivity on that job. Now, I might also, again, look at things from a broader perspective. So that's very useful that I can take all those logs and see how a job is doing. But here too, right, most people need to manage multiple jobs. So I'm going to go back to this home page here, and you'll see that I have a dashboard that's aggregating all the data from all the jobs. How many jobs does each project manager have? Who's loaded and who could use these two jobs that came in that don't have a person yet? Of all the jobs that I have going on, which ones are killing it? And which are the ones that need help? If I'm managing 10, 15, 20 jobs, I really might not have time to look at each job and say, hey, is this job doing good or bad? Good or bad? Good or bad? I need to focus on the ones that need my attention. So here are my worst performing jobs. And again, that, that data-driven approach takes the data and makes it actionable. This is a bad job. I click on it. Well, this is the Fox Hill development job. Here are your problem accounts. Which are the worst ones? It's these four. And then I can keep drilling down to look at how that, that cost code is performing overall, all the way down to what happened on one field log on one day. Or again, some people aren't about charts and graphs. They're about cold, hard dollars. I'm going to go into a different report that looks over all my jobs, someone called the Job Activity Summary. I just care about the dollars. I'm managing cost. Here's each job, and then prorated for the work that I've done. What did I think I was going to spend on it? What did I really spend on it so far? And what's the delta? So that's real-time data analysis, being able to take just the whatever it is that you can get from the crew and consolidate it and look at it in real time.
the last thing that we'll look at here is the longer term data value. So that in and of itself, right, you can manage each project and that delivers a lot of benefit, a lot of value. But all of that data can show you a much bigger picture over time about how your company tends to perform on things in general. So in other words, I might look at five jobs and say, well, we're good on pipe, but we're bad on uh, electrical, or we're good on dirt, and we're bad on, on asphalt, but that's job per job. How do we do overall? Looking at all the activities on all those jobs, the same engine can take that data and give you bigger pictures and tell you more about where you should be spending your finite resources. Historically speaking, which jobs do I do well and, and which jobs am I weaker on? And that might inform your company about either where to spend time on training, where to spend time on developing more skills, or it could be as simple as telling you where to invest your time and effort in terms of winning those jobs. And then tying it all back to that longer term vision, how do I take that information about where I'm strong and where I'm weak and use it in the bidding process, not just to pick out which jobs I want, but how to better bid those jobs for future profitability. So I'm now going to leave that PowerPoint. I'm going to go back in and show you a different kind of longer term one. This is a cross job production account history report. So what this is going to show me is for a given cost code, how did I perform over all the jobs? So for concrete or if I go to the next page here, something like uh, excavation, here's all the jobs that I've done that cost code on. And then my estimated quantity, my reported quantity, how far into those I am, and then in general, my estimated and reported. So I can start to analyze certain aspects of the business across jobs. Hey, we always seem to be high on this. Why and where, right? Is it equipment? Is it labor? Are we not using the right equipment in our estimates? Do we think we can do, uh, do this with a small dozer, but we really are using a large dozer every time? I don't know which things to look at unless I can start to see those in dollars. So I can very easily start to analyze that in the tracking system. And then going all the way back to the estimating system, I can now start to leverage all of that data that I've gathered using that simple tool to start helping me make better decisions on the estimating side. So I've now jumped back to an estimate. And here I have a, a crew template. So I'm estimating some excavation work and I've got my crew and my default production right here is a thousand cubic yards a day. So I want to know, okay, I, I think I can do a thousand cubic yards, but I've got all this data about what I've really done across all my jobs. I want to look at that. And so I bring up my cross production history. These are all the real jobs from track, which have excavation work in them based on that cost code and what I really achieved for production. And then as a human, I can start to look at those jobs, and pick which ones correlate to the work that I'm doing. Uh, that one was all rock, I'm not gonna use that one, but this one and this job and this job, those are the ones that are most like what I'm doing here. And when I select those, my average is really 591. And so I can leverage all that data to give me a more accurate estimate which hopefully is going to mean that my jobs are closer to the truth when I win this estimate and start working on it. So that's a, a pretty good overview of a number of capabilities that software tools in general and B2W specifically can provide to help give you the tools for that data-driven approach, being able to match what your crews can do or what your field can handle creating a user interface that makes it easier for them to get on board, capture that data, and then give it to you so that you can use that data to start making better, immediate, and longer-term decisions about how to run your business. That is pretty much everything that I'd planned to show. So I'll turn the floor over for any questions and to uh, any other remarks from you, Bob. Thank you, Tom. Let's now open the webinar to questions. You can use the chat feature to submit a question, and I'll read the question to the presenter. Or if you prefer, unmute yourself, state your name and company, and ask the question directly. Remember to remute yourself after you finish.
Well, we've got one question here. What are some of the biggest roadblocks to implementing a data-driven approach? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. Um, that's one that we come up with a lot. Um, the Probably the two biggest roadblocks would be not having a well enough defined criteria of what data it is you want to capture. So people will say, well, I, wanna, I want everything. Mm, you know, you, it's sometimes unrealistic to say I want to get everything. And so as a company, you could kind of sit down and narrow that focus down to say, well, where, where does it hurt, right? Where do we know that we can capture the best bang for buck? Is it labor? Is it equipment? Or is it production? Or is it something else entirely? Is it safety? Is it QA and QC? These are all areas and, and really knowing what it is that you want to improve your data on first is going to help you to shape who you look at and what it is you seek on the open market. The other roadblock is, uh, is a lack of harmony within the company. And so when we talk about that dichotomy of what, what management wants and what the field will do, that's a big one. And we've seen a lot of times where upper management is very frustrated because they can't grow the company the way they need and want to because they're stymied by what the field will allow them to do. Or an almost worse approach, management says, well, we're doing this and, and you're either with us or you're not. And they force a new system on top of the field without that adoption, without them really truly embracing it, any piece of software in the world is going to fail. I don't care who made it. If, if somebody's just buying it and throwing it at a field worker and saying, do this, um, that's not a recipe for success. So lack of harmony within the company and then a, a lack of focus on what, what problems you're trying to solve are the two biggest ones. Thank you, Tom. Do we have other questions? Got another one here. What kind of contractors use this solution? Oh, that's a, that's a good one, too. It varies widely. Pretty much everyone in the heavy civil and uh, specialty contractor space. So our biggest market verticals are uh, paving, um, utilities, wet and dry, so uh, pipe as well as heavy electrical. But we've seen even small landscaping companies. Uh, again, if they have a targeted need and use, a lot of times they see huge benefit in it. Um, it's really you could almost be as bold to say any company that uses labor and equipment and materials and feels like they could estimate better or, or wants better data from the field. But the, the reality is uh, pavers, you know, both asphalt and concrete, um, heavy, um, heavy civil dirt movers, excavating, grading, electrical erosion control. Uh, we see a lot of renewables, so a lot of wind and solar construction companies using it as well. Thank you, Tom. Are there other questions? We have one. Is this software subscription based? Oh, yeah. Uh, great question. It, it is now. <laughs> so we've only just recently started to offer a subscription based. Up until very recently, it was only, uh, it was only purchasable as a, uh, a perpetual license. Uh, we've really yielded to what the market has wanted, and the market wants flexibility to lower that upfront cost. So, yes, now for our products, um, all of them have a subscription option. Thank you, Tom. We've got another question. Can a company improve data gathered step-by-step -step or steps with B2W? Does your company program the foundation of the program as our company improves and wants more data? And somebody start out simple, and then it gets more complicated. Oh, yes, super great question. Yes and yes. So I see those really as two sides of the same question, right? When, so when people say, well, geez, can we take a, a crawl, walk, run approach? Absolutely. And that's a super smart way to do it, especially if you have a, a field organization that's very, um, I don't want to even say resistant, but concerned about change. Um, you've seen how flexible the field log is. It's a very common approach to say, look, look, everybody, we are going to start with just labor. That's all we're going to do is take all that stuff that you do now, and instead of writing it down on paper, we're going to put it in this iPad. And, and 
the second piece of that, right, is helping people get the data set up. So an implementation process where someone like me that knows the system backwards and forwards, they work with them to say, look, what are your goals? What do you eventually want to get out of the system? And where do you want to start? And so they'll engineer the implementation around where do I want to end up, knowing that where you start is a lot, a much smaller subset. And so it really is very achievable to say, look, we're going to turn everything in the field log off except for labor. Then maybe two months, three months, six months, maybe a year later, everyone's happy and comfortable. And they say, okay, this new initiative for this year, we're going to add equipment. And it is as simple as just turning on a new section, and now you have all this information that you can add. So companies can be very flexible, and they can go in both directions. Sometimes they bite off a little more than they can chew out of the gate, and so they back it off. They might start with labor and equipment and say, mm, too much, we're just going to go labor. But, yeah, having a company to help you set up that database and set up that data collection experience to support that business goal is very important. Thank you, Tom. We've got another question. Does the software have a mobile phone interface? Um, it does. So the thing that you saw me entering data into, that is a full track license, and that's designed for a crew. And in our parlance, anything more than one person is considered a crew. So two or more people, they would use that tablet interface. We do also have another application called the Field Employee app. That is That would go on something as small as a phone, and that's designed for a single person to capture their hours for their payroll, also their equipment hours, their quantities, and a, a number of other data points. So for a, a single person like a loan operator or a truck driver or low bed driver, we do. We have a phone interface for them to capture their time. And we've got one more question, Tom. Does this replace my ERP or accounting system? Oh, yes. I sort of talked about that. Absolutely not. No, that's a really important question. These tools are designed to work with, to augment and help an ERP system. But those, those products that I showed you track uh, and estimate, they will never replace an ERP. In fact, one of the reasons that Trimble purchased us is because they wanted operational tools, but they already had a great set of ERP solutions with Vista and Spectrum by Viewpoint. So we will, we will in many times, um, get information from an ERP. So you're entering your employees, your equipment, um, subs and vendors into an ERP system, and then we, we use that data, we capture payroll, and then we send it back to the ERP. So we work with, we would never replace an ERP. One last question under the wire. Does this software communicate with Sage 100? Uh, yes, very good question. We do. We have we have integration with um, probably th about two or three dozen ERP systems and Sage 100. I think that used to be um, Sage Master Builder. We do. We have an export for that. So clients can use our system to capture uh, labor hours and send it to Sage to drive payroll, specifically Sage 100. And I think that's it for questions. Let's go and wrap it up. Oh, we have one more. Look at you jumping in. Does the software have GPS tracking or geofencing to auto clock employees in and out as they enter the site and leave sites, or is it all manual entry? Mm. Um, it does not have the ability to auto clock people in based on location. The the mobile phone app, so the, the employee app for a single person, does have the ability to record where you are. So when you clock in, it does make a note of where you are, but the software in and of itself does not restrict you or automatically log you in. That's something we're, we're kind of looking at, uh, but I will say that there's a lot of downside to that. You know, if you drive through a job site on your way to another job site, or if you're doing something off the job site. So there's a lot of um, workflows around that that, you know, that's, that's a very appealing sounding magic wand, but the, the reality is that the field work tends to be a bit more complicated than that. I'm sorry, sorry Tom, you have a uh, series of questions here. Everyone uh, likes what you're saying. Well, one more question. We are a grading contractor. We have only one license of track. 
can multiple superintendents use the same license of track if they use it at different times? No, that is a good question. The answer is no. Um, for our ops product, specifically track uh, as part of that ops, those are meant to be named user licenses. So they are, they are supposed to be dedicated to a single person, even if they don't use them very often. Now that is different than our estimating system. The estimating system is what's called a concurrent licensing model where you can and should share licenses among people. Uh, but the, the track program is not designed that way. There's a lot of security and accountability. And so that is a named, you, you must have a license per each named person that will use it. And I think that's going to be it for questions. We want to be respectful of everyone's time. Tom, thank you very much for your time today to present this webinar. We'd also like to thank our many national partners for generously supporting NUCA and our monthly webinar series. Today's webinar has been recorded. A recording of this webinar will be made available on the NUCA.com website and on our YouTube channel over the next few days. And thank you for your time today to join us for this special industry webinar and for supporting NUCA. Thank you for your time this afternoon, and please enjoy the rest of your week.